to. Eric El Paso. came from quite a spooky place when he was younger. Yeah. Our house? Spooky place. Just the whole uh, area, so wasn't it? If there like if there is a such thing as like hauntings or being haunted, whatever that is. Yeah. Uh definitely the house I grew up in was one of those. Uh from everything from weird feelings, sounds, noises, apparitions, stuff moving, uh all that. We had all that growing up. Like in my home, my house, yeah, to where we had to bring in a priest and try to bless the rooms and all this stuff. And like my parents, not just the kids, you know, everyone was flipping out, you know, and the house had a history and all this. Yeah, it was pretty wild. Like I could go on if you want to hear about it. I yeah, just thought I Dan mean, might, I think I thought Dan might want to hear a bit because he's not heard True. it, you know. Well, here I think we spoke about this a long time Did ago, we? but. I, I'd love to re re listen. Yeah. Okay. Well I'll tell you some of it you gotta know. I'm we moved there when I was about four, three and a half or four. I mean it was about three and a half. And um so that's where my memory starts and you have to know a three and a half year old it's kinda I can pull my memories back from when I was two, but like it's not as strong. And I just have to believe yeah. what I was told by the adults. So my father uh, found this place. It was a rock home. I mean, it was built from just big pieces of rock. Okay. Yeah. And they don't, I don't think they knew how old it was, but they spoke, the The locals said some, the Spanish built it back when it was part of, like Texas was not owned by America or Texas or, you know what I mean? So it was that old. And anyway, uh, so um, this old man, they say, had lived there. And at night, you know, people, everyone was afraid of this house. The locals, uh, it was on the highway, no neighbors. Like it was just in the in middle of a, a huge fields. And I mean, when I say huge, like thousands of acres, there was no house. There was no neighbors. Okay. Anyway, uh, but they would see lights in the in the windows and there and he was known to have many kids over there okay and um he eventually died and when he did somehow there were 13 uh people that inherited the the property and when for, i don't know how it began cuz my grandfather somehow told my dad about it and then my dad went around and spoke to each one of these inheritors and they said he said hey i'd like to buy this house and they were like uh we don't want anything to do with it you can have it <laughs> and like nearly all of them said that and uh one of them i think he bought it for like thirteen thousand five hundred bucks or something like that now, this is in the 80s which still that's not very much money you know because basically they didn't want it none of them but finally he he wanted the I don't know why he wanted that particular property, but it was, it was only seven acres, but it had that old house. It had a super old water well, an, an old cellar with a shack on top of it. And then an old, old barn. And then another just completely dilapidated house also on the property and then fields. So we get there and um, my parents tell me th that, or they're, they're always talking about, and I remember some of this, me and my brother would see things and, and hear things in the yard. And like, I would hear kids playing all the time out in the yard. And I was a little kid and I was like, Oh, who's visiting. I want to go play. And I would run out there and I would run around the yard trying to find them. And I, I could never like find them, uh, but I could hear them. And then sometimes like, you know, I would see some kids and I would be talking and waving at them and, through the window and then my mom would say who are you waving at you know and uh me or my brother would just say oh those those kids out there can we go play and she would you know tell us hey there's nobody here <laughs> and uh others other times i would you would hear coughing uh inside the the house in the living room and, the, and in the kitchen and when i was uh a couple of times so not a couple of times dozens of maybe a hundred times at night, I would always wake up 
um, and see a small amount of light coming from the living room. And I would get up in the middle of the night and go to see what it was. And I could faintly hear uh, what I thought was either the radio or, or the TV. I couldn't tell. But when I would open the door to go into the living room, it would, it would, it would go off. Like, and, and I would literally see, cause we, back then we had old tube TVs, you know, how it would make that little dot in the center. I would see the TV go off. And then, um, sometimes you would hear some movement and it was usually like the sound of a chair or something. And this happened like, I don't know how many times. And I would have that, uh, you probably heard of, I guess it's called sleep paralysis or whatever, where sometimes I would wake up at night and I, and I was trying as hard as I could to move or scream or yell. And I, yeah. <clears throat> but my eyes were open and I could see the room, but I could not move. And that happened a lot. And then sometimes mm -hmm. I would wake up screaming at some point, my willpower would overpower it. And then I would scream. And then my kids would not my kids, my parents would come in the room, you know, asking what was wrong. <laughs>
And uh, another time, <clears throat> I want to say I was probably maybe 12 by this point, my father had built like a wooden uh, toy box and it was next to my bed. And um, my brother and I had separate rooms, by the way. But anyway, yeah. um, it was near the bed and I felt someone push me off the bed while I was asleep and I fell off the bed and hit my eye like the cheekbone on the corner of that like solid wood um toy box and I was just crying and crying and I was just like so it was it was painful you know but I knew that it was yeah. something wild and crazy so I just cried and kind of got back in bed and went back to sleep well this happened like three times <laughs> like to where it pushed you out of the bed three times yeah. no and it what? was a hard push like through me like across like from like a couple feet off the bed and I, you know, I was not like rolling. And even if you did like kind of roll off, you wouldn't hit the toy box. They, it was a push. And <clears throat> my dad had a story where uh, he had this big lump on his head and we would ask him, Hey, you know what, what the heck happened, dad? You know, you're losing some hair right there even. And he was young, you know, he's in his twenties at this point. And um, he said that he was trying to, this was before we completely moved into the house that he was trying to uh, clean it up because it was a, it was a total disaster when we moved in. I didn't tell you that part. So we came in by a mobile home trailer home that we pulled from El Paso and um, we're living in that while he was going to renovate the rock house, the rock house, yeah. all the ceiling, there was rubble all over the floor, the walls, the, the house was just disaster inside. You couldn't live in it. Uh, it's like you you know uh anyway so he was trying to build it himself inside there uh and so when he was in there he said somebody uh told him to get out and then threw him into the floor a couple of times and that's how he bumped his head like on the concrete floor and that's uh why he had that injury and he was like he was yelling he said at the you know ghost or whatever to say you're not kicking me out of my house like my dad was that way you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah. It's like arguing, <laughs> arguing with this entity. Like, I'm not leaving. You're gonna leave. You know, one like in the blue blazers are you doing? Yeah. Did yeah, you yeah, try like burning it. herbs it's... and stuff to get rid of these spirits, or like doing? You know what I mean? They... Or like bring the Bible and shake it out them, or bring did some we? holy water. Yeah. yeah. Did you try anything? Later on, they had to get the exorcist in, right? We did. Um, circling back to the sleep paralysis thing. Yeah. Did anything ever talk to you uh so at that point no the 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 voices mostly ended when i was younger so yeah. like um dad's going into like 12. psychologist mode <laughs> well whatever I'm, but like, i'm asking hear, the question because I, noises, I have a similar story to but not like a conversation relay. Like I would hear okay. a word or two or like crying or some sort of sounds, but it was more like a, like I said, like a phrase. And did then you actually not hear like a conversation it? Like, did you on. feel like you actually heard it like in the physical space or did oh, yeah. you hear it in your mind? Do you know, like, was there a well, difference? Okay. You know? I don't. Okay. So I have a strong, I think kind of, I don't know what we call it. Uh, when you talk, to yourself which is like an inner monologue i guess you know what you know when it's yours yeah N no i wouldn't say i mean yeah you okay. do know but i'm saying it's very my voice in my head is loud anyway and yeah. and when i have a dream i do i probably when i'm dreaming cannot differentiate like my level of voice is loud you know and so it's like um when i hear something if i were to wake up did i really hear that no, that happened. I definitely heard it. Like, wasn't a 
it wasn't me imagining a conversation. It was I heard it. Yeah. I mean, like, uh, no, I meant Real like, noise. was it projecting it into your mind, or was it actually projecting a physical? No, that's what, sound? that's that's the point I was trying to make. It, yeah. it was an actual mm. sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'd never asked that that's before. Kinda, I was trying to say that. I didn't ask that before. Right. before. <laughs> Dan, do you reckon? Uh, I think uh, do you reckon Buckingham's yeah. haunted? Do you reckon Buckingham's haunted? Have you heard uh, any I stories? Was gonna, <laughs> I was, I was going to tell you. I was going to tell Eric this story. Basically, I've I've only ever had sleep paralysis once, mm. and the one time that I had it, something happened to me that no one else who I've ever spoken to about sleep paralysis has experienced. Mm-hmm. Um, I was living here. I was probably sixteen, seventeen. I I'm not really sure, but I still. Uh, slept in my old bedroom which I don't I don't live in that room now um, and I woke up in the middle of the night and I couldn't move and I looked around the room I was fully conscious at this point and I looked around the room and I couldn't see what was holding me down I couldn't move and I thought there's someone on me I can't move something's holding me down to the bed couldn't see anything couldn't couldn't feel some like an arm or anything grabbing me but i could feel this weight on top of me and then i heard the voice and there was a voice and it said no leave them and as it said that voice, the weight lifted off of me mm. and I could move. And I got up and I checked on my dad who slept in the room that I'm sleeping in now, checked on my brother and my mum to see that they were okay. And I, I just went to the bathroom and then went back to bed and thought nothing of it, which apparently is quite common in these situations. But the fact that I heard a voice, apparently that's not common at all Yeah. with sleep paralysis at all. And normally people say that you're asleep when it happens. I was fully awake. I looked around the room. I got up afterwards. Yeah. No, me too. Some people say it's like your brain tricking you, if you see what I mean. Mine was, I was... For, that's why I got frightened. I was awake. Yeah, I knew I was yeah. not asleep. Yeah, and 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 I just could not move. That's the paralysis part. And like I said, even my eyes were fully open. You know. Yeah. I just couldn't not even lift up. I didn't feel though, like you said. And I know a lot of people do say there's some sort of weight on you. I didn't yeah. feel that. I didn't feel like a pressure of a weight. It was just more of I could not move. I was like it was like a yeah. barrier that I couldn't cross. And and it was yeah. It kind of felt like I was being held down. I don't know yeah. if it felt like someone was sitting on me, That's but it was like thing. something was forcing me down, and I couldn't get up. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I it's, have it's, the opposite, it, and it's it like, is crazy. I'm asleep, and then I just jolt. You awake. had one. No, I have the opposite. I'm asleep, and then yeah. I. Yeah. I feel like but that's I'm falling having like over. A... I fall, feel like mm-hmm. I'm falling, and then I. That's just a wake nightmare, up with a right? The falling dream wakes you up. So, what? So also, it would be like just as I just well, gotten to sleep, been asleep like I ten know minutes, and then I just draw away. Yeah, I feel it's like you feel insecure or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's totally different experience, and and um, I know that some people have this theory that there you've probably heard of the electrical body, and there's something to do with um astral plane out of body experiences and this and that where uh you can it's sort of like your your body that can be physically seen in an electrical uh i don't know uh filter you can look and it will not be in the same position as your physical body sometimes and it's the signals that are being sent to and from your brain they become misaligned with your actual body somehow that shouldn't be possible due to if they go down nerve endings right but they've seen this under um i don't know what kind of 
uh, microscopes or whatever it is they look at MRIs or whatever it is. I'm not sure, but you can see probably photos of this where they can see where your hand is not sitting where you think it is, the electrical part of it. Anyway, some people that travel, quote, while they're sleeping and then they'll, that is their body realigning itself with its physical self. And that's why the jolt is you'll feel like it's sort of like you're falling back or you're coming back to position. And when you do, you know, the movement and the momentum like continues for a second and then you're, you know, and it, it feels like a jolt. At least I've experienced that as well, even just doing meditation and, and even in a, you know, the trance like state versus, you know, what we were talking about sleep paralysis is like a totally different deal. I don't think I drove uh, on this one at all. Not even with the bigger control. Your mind? Huh? Your mind? Well, yeah. Where you been? You look all dressed up. Well, I have been anywhere. I just put some clothes on. You got your bike for once. Huh? Got your bike for once. Yeah, it's fucking 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 fucking. What'd you think? What'd you think? Oh, uh, yeah, boy. <coughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, have a look. You drive it down there. Go on then, have a drive. Emergency stop. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, sit on. Okay, now. Alright, alright. You've got to have the brake off. There you go. Oh, you put a brake on this stuff. You put it back on. Yeah, yeah, keep it forward. Forward, right. Now pull this. You turn that that way, yeah? Yeah. To open it. Yeah. It'll pop out. Then yeah. you, like... Yeah. 
<laughs> okay. See you later, mate. That's not full power. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How far does it go? It's not, <laughs> it's not fully charged, though. <laughs> Not really. I mean, they do. Yeah. Your your brain produces a tranquilizer chemical to put you to sleep. That, in a sense, is a paralysis, right? Chemically, that is natural. And so, science will typically blame it on that. That your your brain's producing that at a the wrong level, or the wrong. You know what I mean? Uh, and that's your issue. Uh, I don't know. It's just some people' theories, but I mean. I definitely, it was more frightening to me, and I think there was more to it, you know, back then when that was occurring. It hasn't happened to me for a long time, not since I moved I out of the house. I would say the same. Yeah. Was I there then, <clears throat> Dan? That was I, I there at the time? <laughs> was I in the house at you the time? You were in the Do house, yeah. I checked on you to see that you were okay. Because I'm, think I'm thinking, yeah. like, when um, I'm around, I would also ghosts, say, like, fuck off, you know. <laughs> 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 I would also say that it sounded like the voice that spoke was trying to tell whatever was stopping me from moving mm -hmm. to get off. Yeah. It wasn't like it was whatever was on me was saying, nah, I'll, I'll get off yeah. now. It was like something else saying, get off him. Well, that's probably why you know, my experience is totally different than yours because I didn't have that entity, second entity interfering. Yeah. You know, and most people don't, I guess, you know, most people yeah. just, they get the thing that's attacking, but there's not this guardian angel or whatever, uh, that, yeah. you know, interfered. Uh, that's pretty cool. You know, I would think, and I would say if it's like mine, and like I said, it was not, a, uh, an asleep dreamlike state that I was in. It was different. Yeah. And when you hear something, like I say, I can tell the difference of an auditory sound that is physical coming to my ear. Uh, probably if there's a third party, even like that's that's wild. You know, it's, it's crazy enough to hear yeah. one other person besides yourself that's not supposed to be there to hear two. Yeah. Pretty yeah. unique. No, leave Harry Potter to yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you leave. No, leave you leave. Them. And then they just, I know yeah. you are, but what am I? So so yeah that was that was a kind of a crazy experience but um the only other strange thing and again it happened in this house um mm. maybe it's something about this house i used to have dreams that i could float down the stairs okay mm -hmm. and these were recurring dreams and i used to think that i was genuinely floating down the stairs and my only explanation for it was that there were aliens above <laughs> the house trying to abduct me what and that was pulling me up to the ceiling and then i was floating down the stairs because they were trying to get me out to the front door so <laughs> it wasn't you doing the. it wasn't me floating but then Someone also making i kind float. of feel like maybe i was the one that was doing the floating <laughs> it's so bizarre yeah no I've i know i heard that before <laughs> you were being abducted <laughs> yeah it felt like either I was I was sitting there with my legs crossed and could just make myself float or something was pulling me and pulling mm -hmm. me to the ceiling and I was just floating down the step. And it happened, oh, at least 10 times where I'd, I felt like I was genuinely awake flying down the stairs, but it, it, in my adult rational brain, it, it had to have been a dream. Yeah. Mm. No, I mean... <laughs> I mean, uh, I, I guess you thought you were awake floating down the stairs. But yeah. Dan, didn't you yeah. tell me that and you I don't thought, oh, that's really cool. You don't have many dreams at all, if any. Not anymore, no. But when this floating... When happened, I was a kid, I did. It did. So, my dreams stopped when i think after i got married and 
probably more <laughs> when I had children. I became more of a <laughs> no. I became more of a deep sleeper, and I could sleep through a lot more. Whereas I used to be quite a light sleeper, mm. and yeah, I feel like. I, I stopped having as many lucid or strange dreams as... I, I forget dreams now. I Too don't really wake up and go, oh, I, I had a dream last night. Yeah, yeah maybe it, maybe it's just exhaustion with... You're not of, the only one, though. Um, Jason Athene abuse says and, the same thing. Yeah. On YouTube, this guy called Jason says the same yeah. thing. Same thing as what you said. So I, I think it's actually. caffeine abuse, to be honest. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Because your, when your you're brain is like overstimulated block, um, by caffeine. When you're trying to block out other people's noises and stuff and cars, it's like you kind of shut your mind down before you go to sleep. And I think that actually makes you yeah. less perceptive of what's happening. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, here's something I would... I don't know if I'm just typically a weirdo. I'm, I typically don't fall into any of those logical categories you might say that most people do because i have the ability when there's a very light sound or some light movement or i wake up immediately but i also dream very, dream very deeply and remember all my dreams and i will wake up like you know say 10 times a night but i'll still go back to sleep quickly it's just that i also wake up easily but i still have a dream on each of those and I still remember them, like when I wake up. You know what I mean? So it's like a double. I'm aware. I think in both. Yeah. The asleep. Do and you awake. consume caffeine regularly? Oh yeah. Okay. Big time. How much? <laughs> I was going to say, how much username. do you think you drink a day? Look at his username. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I drink a lot. Yeah. Not only caffeine, but I mean like alcohol i'll have some you know at night or i'll have soda or coffee and uh that's daily like coffee is daily a lot like i'm not saying one or two cups like four cups <laughs> or, or whatever yeah. you know and then as okay. well and i'll drink a lot of water while i'm at work and then when i come home i'll probably have you know I'll pour myself a set myself up a bourbon or whiskey or scotch something like that uh and and sometimes i'll stay up late sometimes i won't and that's the thing too i was in the military uh in basic training or in deployment you basically you're on a schedule you have to sleep you have only got this set amount of time and i and i and i had practiced yeah. it when i was young anyway to where i can make myself go to sleep and then i can also for some reason set an alarm clock in my head and I'll tend to, even when I set my actual alarm, I'll always wake up like a minute or two before it goes off. Uh, it's just whatever. And it doesn't matter what time it is. You could say 4.45, some weird time that I never wake up at, and I'll still yeah. do that. Maybe you can't tell Dan. I, I find that now. <sighs> hmm? Maybe you can't tell, but Eric, that, Eric is quite an unusual person. Maybe you can't tell Dan. <laughs> <laughs> He's quite I mean, an unusual person, even, yeah, com even since compared moving to you. Back... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, since even moving back here, I I'm more I I, I resonate with what you're saying. Mm. So I, I'll wake up like two minutes before my alarm yeah. and stuff in the morning, whereas I used to just sleep through the entire night. And obviously, if my kids woke up and were ill or something, I'd wake up for that. But it feels like my yeah my sleep patterns are a lot less uh they're less rigid than they but used to be. But what's weird too is like it's not like I know even consciously what time is it. Mm. You you know what I mean? I don't know what time it is, especially not to the minute. You know, like in in an I I wear a watch and I look at it all the time or or whatever. You know, it's not like I'm some clock that i that i know i think it's an unconscious or another conscious another version sometimes some other i way. can do that you know what i mean that it's being what's that sometimes i can do that like for example like um last time i was at the police station like it might have been last year um we were waiting for the solicitor to come and like i was talking to mm. the cop that i know and um 
I was saying like I'm gonna guess like how long we've been here for, and like I guessed mm-hmm. it, and it was like pretty close. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like you can just guess what time of day it is, or like how long you've been doing something. But then at other times, mm. I'm, like, totally, like, lost track of time. <laughs> and I'll, like, burn my yeah. food or yeah, something yeah. like that, you know. You know. Yeah, it is dependent. That's me being a space cadet, and maybe you're that way too, Ash, because uh, I, I, in a band, I was the drummer, and I could sit here and I could count for you, like, one, two, like, on time. If you want to do, you know, like, actual timing, I'm, I'm very good at spatial distance to and measurement and and time but i'm not focused on that and most of the time i I don't care about that so like if you were to tell me hey you know how long has it been and i stopped and i thought about it for a while i could probably come up with something close but most of the time i'm oblivious to whatever's going on because i'm a space cadet (laughs) but it may be like that for you too ash where you're (laughs) i mean you're thinking your mind is in outer space you might be doing okay. one thing, but you're thinking about something else. I'll tell you so something. I'm more right? focused on like. Sometimes when yeah. I have a dream, right? I, in the dream, I like hear like, or I create the most interesting sounding musical melody or something. But then yeah. and I think like, oh, I've got to like, this sounds really good. Like I've never heard this before. I've got to like record it when mm-hmm. I wake up. But then by the time it's oh, that, yeah. like, but it's very hard to remember like what it actually was. Sometimes I can, but it's like as you waking up, you kind of lose it um, unless you keep repeating it. Do you get what I mean? It quickly fades, like yeah. even if you still remember yeah, it I as always... you're starting to wake up. Do you, does that happen mm-hmm. to you? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, don't you think that's weird too? That that's common among everyone and why and what mechanism is that and what use is that for us you know as a human whatever like why should that be the case you know where where the like one uh sometimes something interesting will occur let's say in a dream state and it fades away or it's not remembered at all why why is that memory gone why are we not why are we not able to keep that memory why is that ram emptied you know like a like a computer when it you know is rebooting you know you're not those are getting set back to zero but other memories don't work like that you know so is it a different style of memory the things that we experience in a dream is that uh, on a different memory chip you know than our normal waking memory and if so how can we access that you know or at least write it copy it and write it to the real memory whatever blocks 